Hi, you're watching Bloomberg Quint. We're inside the Congress Center as we continue to cover the World Economic Forum's annual meeting. It's day two. Like I've been telling you right since the start of my trip here in Davos, this year's co-chairs are mostly young people that have risen to deal with fight and mitigate the challenges that all of us across the world are facing, whether it has to do with waste management or the refugee crisis. I'm joined today by one of the co-chairs of the WEF, Akira Sakano. He's the chair of the Zero Waste Academy. Akira, thank you very much for joining us. And just to tell you a little bit about the Zero Waste Academy, it's a not-for-profit environmental organization that is helping the Japanese town of Kamikatsu to become waste-free by the year 2020. Yes. How did you start off on this journey, Akira? Okay, so the town itself actually started with fighting against incinerator problems because when they started to see all the plastics coming in, all these new products coming in from outside, and then they could no more uh, dump the waste into the field, they, they built a the small incinerator. However, then we had the issue with dioxin coming out mm -hmm. from the incinerator. So the, the town had to shut it down. But again, reinvesting towards high-tech incinerator didn't work for such a small town. So they had to find a way around to see how we can manage waste, mm -hmm. and then they got into the resource recovery strategies. Okay. Yes. So before we get to the resource recovery strategies, are you from this town? How did you get involved in this project? Uh, how did you come to work in this area? What drove you or inspired you to do this? Great. So I'm originally from uh, environmental policy background. Okay. Then when I was uh, studying and working on the environmental policy design, mm -hmm. I had a really huge uh, challenge in terms of designing the policy versus actually implementing it in the ground. So I thought, OK, uh, maybe by making a very small case practices, but very showing that the potential of how much we can do as a small community can be a big influencer for the rest of the world. So that's how I decided to move into the town. I'm originally from a city. Okay. <laughs> which city are you from? I'm from Nishinomiya, which okay. is near Kobe. Near Kobe. <laughs> all right. And you wanted to do this all your life? Yes. Um, in terms of uh, making sure that environmental um, shift happens in the world, yes. So the waste management, it, it wasn't my topic originally. However, in terms of implementing what's possible in the community scale or the local scale, that is what I want to see. So when did you move to Kamikatsu? Actually, I moved in in 2014. Okay. Then the organization Zero Waste Academy has been there already since 2005 to support the town. But at the same time, I'm there to accelerate the programs. So what is the solution that you've come upon that will help Kamikatsu become zero waste, uh, you know, by 2020? Okay, so the town itself already run the, the program, which is to segregate waste into 45 different ca categories, not by the municipal office officers, but by the residents themselves. 45 different categories? Yes. And they do this at home? No, actually, they do roughly at home, but they bring all the waste to the waste collection center. Mm -hmm. Then they segregate them into 45, which is actually clear if you stand in front of different bins. And then it clearly states, for example, this is a glass bottle, but with the color of brown. So in terms of clarity in just separating them, it's, it is fine. But the, but the categories is quite massive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's actually motivated the local businesses and residents to look into what they buy and what they purchase. So that's really changing the way they, they consume and then they see the products. So then that also enrolled us as a Zero Waste Academy as an organization to support waste reduction initiatives in the community. Right. So now we run, for example, the Zero Waste Accreditation Scheme for the businesses to be branded how much they reduce the waste. But this, this micro segregation must be step one, right? You still must run yes. into the challenge that you had with the earlier incinerator. How do you actually dispose of this waste and what do you do with it? Exactly. So we still got 20% uh, of our waste um, still going to either incineration or to landfill. But we recovered 80%, which is All of it is recyclable, that means. Exactly. 80% of the waste is recyclable. Yes. But the rest of the 20%, we cannot achieve it 
only with our community because all these products coming in from the outside, which is not designed to be recyclable, or it is too expensive to invest on the technology which is possible to recycle. So we need to see the systemic change in the in the society as a whole, how we can design our products to be designed to mm. be recovered. And then there we need everyone on board, all from the businesses, even the policy makers, Okay, so when you say zero waste by 2020, mm -hmm. uh, it means that you hope that by 2020, 100% of the waste that Kamikatsu actually generates will all be recyclable. That's, that's the goal? Is that how it works? Yes, recyclable. Of course, this is like one perspective definitely to But how measure. else do you achieve zero waste? Exactly. So I would say the waste it's really about the perspectives. So of course, when you see it as a waste, it is waste. But if it can be recovered as recycled, or it can be used as a different product, maybe by upcycling, reusing, then that is also fine. I wouldn't say that we never produce any waste from our daily life. But as long as it can be used afterwards, again and again, I don't see that as a waste. So how do you how do you deal with sewage and things like that? I mean, how does the town become zero waste? I was most taken aback when I read that, and I said, how does any community of human beings become zero waste? I can understand increasing the percentage or proportion of recyclable material, yes. mm -hmm. but how do you become zero waste? Yeah, so as I said, the percentage of the recyclable will increase, to, of course, happen, and then in that context context size, as I mentioned, recyclable materials needs to come into the community mm -hmm. for the consumption because without the technology and then the material change or the systemic change to make it happen, then we, we can't see the zero waste happening by 2020. That's why I'm here to voice out for the business community, policy making community to see how we can make the systemic change. Okay, yeah. a couple of questions on culturally how this works, right? Mm -hmm. How difficult or easy was it for you and your organization to mm -hmm. work with the citizens of Kamikatsu and bring them on board? If as a citizen in my daily life I was confronted with having to segregate my waste into 45 different categories, you know, I, I might say, hey, I don't have the time to do this, so I, I don't really want to be involved. Much as my intention is good, I may just not find the time. How difficult was that transition from a people point of view? Yes, so to start with, of course, everyone was just dumping the waste in the big hole originally. <laughs> but um, that actually was the practice already that people brought their waste to a certain point to this board. Mm -hmm. So we, we used as a community, as a the strategic way, that they still bring the waste to a certain point, but now they have to so segregate yeah. it. Yeah. Then, um, of course, that wasn't easy for them to just look into the categories and, well, like, why do we need to do this? And they were pin like finger pointing up to the, the local government that we are paying tax, why not? <laughs> You're doing it. But at the same time, like, the government, and together with our organization, has been really communicating on the ground, not only as um, a community gathering and we visit them, but also at the, the waste collection center to let them understand the entire flow of the waste. So where it's coming from, which where they buy. At the same time, if you segregate where it goes and then how much it costs or how much it earns to the town. So it gives them the clarity that by segregating this, how much they save as an entire community Mm -hmm. as a money, of course, at the same time how much we can actually recover as a resources. So waste problem is really about out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. So if you throw away, you never think about the waste afterwards. But we give the clarity so that people can slowly understand why we are doing this. Then now I would say only, let's say, 20% of the residents mm -hmm. are so motivated about this. I'd say 60% are OK to cooperate. They get it. The rest of the 10, 10 to like 15 percent ish, I'd say they never get it. But at the same time, the community pressure, the majority is there. So that's why they still collaborate at some point. So has the city authority imposed any penalties for not participating in this? It's all entirely voluntary. Yes. And you're saying 60 percent of the citizens of this town have voluntarily devoted their time and effort to segregate to yes. this extent and participate in this project. Yeah. 
yeah, then that's of course to be do, done with our ground staff because they are the one really communicating on the daily basis why it's important. So how many, how large is this town of Kamikatsu? We only got 1,500 population, but okay. I would say that's not the reason why we are doing, that we could be succeed, successful because it's not about the number of the residents because all the intention they have, the motivation they have varies. So, and then we are such in the, the landscape that we are quite scattered. Mm -hmm. We are not living in like only like closed areas. So that's why I'd say even in the cities, if you create the certain circulation as a community scale, then that is also deplicable. At okay. the same time, in, in our community, like it is to kind of give the clarity for every level of understanding or the intentions why it is important. Okay, uh, wh what success have you reached so far? So you intend to be zero waste by 2020? How yes. close are you to achieving that target? So as I mentioned, the resource recovery, recycling rate is 80%. Right now it's 80%. Yeah. Then actually outside of the 80%, we do 100% composting for our organic waste, food okay. waste. Then we do have our reusing shop which people bring in anything they, they don't use anymore, that's circulating in the community more than 90%. So these are the, some of the numbers that we have already achieved. And you believe that this is scalable? You've just explained yes. how you think that it can be done community-wise in large cities as well. Yes. But this is scalable at a city level, um, at, you know, and the costs of uh, educating citizens, of converting them into wanting to believe in this, of monitoring this project, uh, add the costs, add the cultural shift, and you still believe this is scalable at a city and a country level as well? Yes, I wouldn't say everyone needs to segregate them into 45 know, categories, of course no. not, yes. <laughs> but as a model, yes, it yes. is. Okay, so what is the predominant message that you're sharing with businesses whilst here in Davos? Because this really is a collection of yes. the world's richest, most powerful, and many of them are business leaders. What's the message you're sending out to them? Is it be careful of the kind of products that you're manufacturing, think through that process, because eventually this is the outcome that you're going to have to deal with? Exactly, so I'd say, as I mentioned, the system change for each corporate or individual organization needs to happen because what they are put into the market or what they just create as a whole towards not only I would say the society but to the planet we already see all the pollution coming into the ocean as a plastics and everything so just be aware of what you are putting as a footprint to the earth then we can start with very small thing maybe technology can help to look into the materials or how they produce or how they recover afterwards but at the same time what the small step they can make to change. And then maybe as a community advocate we do, we can also support to work with their corporate staff or mm -hmm. I mean people side we can support to work with. And what's the response been like here? I'd say quite many people, are, the intention is there <laughs> that they want to of course work towards better world. But again, of course they have so much conflict, not as a society, but like even in the, in the organization itself. So that's where I'd say, I, I don't want them to say just, eh, it's impossible, but to see, look into the clear potentials. And they're not just talking about, it could be possible, but how can we make sure it's possible? Well, it's a long journey, Akira, but it's yeah. a noble one. Thank you so much for finding the time to speak with us. And all the best, uh, you know, uh, I hope that what you're doing with Kamikatsu becomes a model for almost every single city I know India could do with it desperately as well. Definitely. Thanks very much for your Thank time. Thank you very much. Thank you.